It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Have you guys seen a video that was just so fucking cringy? You cannot help but to laugh about how cringy it is. Well, there's a video that was done on YouTube by Rage at the Storm, where she's a base about race and race realism. And oh my god, it was just so fucking terrible, just terrible. When we speak of racism, the overuse of the word has allowed affirmative action to be implemented in our society. I'm not gonna argue in favor of affirmative action. As a matter of fact, I feel as though that people should use less affirmative action. Now that being said, you do realize that America had a history of systemic racism, right? Affirmative action did not just occur because people shouted racism all the time. It was there because there was legit systemic racism in America. I'm not sure if you really know this, but in the 1950s and the 1960s, we had Jim Crow. In other words, affirmative action was created in a time period where there was actual systemic racism against black people and minorities. Again, not defending affirmative action here, but that's how it was created. Or when we use the word sexism, the use of that word has allowed women to gain more custody rights. Women have more rights than men, not because society yells sexism all the time. Gynocentrism is basically telling people to have women first and men last. In the case of the Titanic, guess what happened? The men die last and the women came out first. So when it comes down to laws, many people have this idea of women first and men last. A lot of it is actually conditional and some of it is actually natural because they fucking did. That's just a fucking fact. What we're told as we little youngsters is that the white man has caused every single issue that exists in Africa. Because they fucking did. That's just a fucking fact. Look, I don't blame everything on white people. I judge people as individuals. In other words, what happened in Africa was then and this is now. Once again, nobody is collectively guilty. However, we must acknowledge that fact. In the book of IQ and the Wealth of Nations, it talks about the IQ of the average sub-Saharan African being at 80. The IQ of an African American is normally at 85. That is because education is terrible in Africa and okay in America. Maybe it's me, but since Boko Haram keeps blowing up those schools, no wonder they have a low IQ. That said, we have so many problems with our school system in America. Many black schools are underfunded and have really bad materials. Not to mention the environment plays a huge factor on why certain people are a certain way in the black community. If you live in an environment that actually supports ghetto culture, you'll probably replicate that. In other words, black IQ go high or low depending on the environment. And the same thing applies to white people too. If a white person was born in an environment that was rough, he'll have a harder time with IQ tests than somebody that was in a safer, much more educated environment. White populations in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Europe, South Africa, and the United States score really close to one another being at around 100. The reason to why IQ is such an important factor is because a lower IQ causes many detrimental factors in society. These include poverty, dropping out of school, unemployment, divorce and lower rates of marriage, welfare dependency, a child's poor motor skills and development, and criminal behavior. So then, setting out these societal differences, which is backed by data, surely should be common sense, right? Think again. We are still expected to act as if these IQ differences do not exist at all, thus assuming that these societal problems occurring are not a genetic factor, but are blamed on white people as per usual. In other words, black people are just born to be violent, and no wonder you call racist. People are not prone to violence or are born to be violent. They are born in an environment that encourages violence. And one way to fix that is to address the issues in black communities. This race baiting bullshit is not helping anybody. By telling people that we should be afraid of black people because they are born violent and have low IQs, it's really hurting race relations. A lot of African languages prove that black people lack abstract thinking. Did you just say that black people lack abstract thinking. 
What the fuck are you smoking? First off, your source for that claim comes directly from a site that's called the Daily Stormer, which is a white supremacist site. Within that article, it claimed that black people lack western morality. The fact that there are good blacks that obey the law disproves that claim. There's people like me, there's people like Patty Politics, there's people like Lisa Nani. There's some black guy and these other black YouTubers. Not to mention the various African immigrants that went to this country and adapt our morality. That fact that that article claimed that black people have no morality is just bullshit. Two, what the fuck do you mean that blacks lack abstract concepts like languages? Because African countries are just so close together, many Africans speak more than one languages. The same thing applies to Europe, because European countries are so close together, so many of you guys speak so many languages. There are just so many things in black culture that proves that black people can have abstract thoughts. For you to say that black people like those things is just fucking wrong. Anyway, that was just fucking painful, just fucking fucking painful. That's all I have to say, until next time, take care.